हरि ओम स्टार्ट विद प्रेयर ओम समस्त जन कल्याणी निरत करुणा नमा चिन्म देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु माता च पितामे तमेव बंधु सखात्मे विद्याद्रविडम सर्व मम देवदेव तमेव सर्व गुरुदेव देव वि आर नाउ डिस्कसिंग द मीन फॉर मोक्ष सो कथम प्रतिष्ठा कथम विमोक्ष सो वन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन इज हाउ डू वी गेट लिबरेटेड फ्रॉम द बॉन्डेज एंड बॉन्डेज हेज बीन डिफाइंड वे अनात्मनी आत्मा इज नॉलेज ऑफ इन दि अनात्मा एज आत्मा और अंड आर नोशन दैट आई एम दिस अनात्मा एंड दैट्स बिकॉज ऑफ इग्नोरेंस सो ओनली टू रिमूव दिस इग्नोरेंस इज ओनली कैन बी रिमूव बाय नॉलेज अलोन नथिंग कैन बी एक्शन के नॉट रिमूव इग्नोरेंस एक्शन मे बी प्रिपरेटरी फॉर गेनिंग नॉलेज बट वॉट रिमूव the ignorance is only knowledge a knowledge appropriate of the ignorance so different types of ignorance in terms of particular knowledge but this is an absolute knowledge ignorance or mola vidya that is a lack of understanding of i am brahmasmi so the liberation or a means of liberation is atma aikya bodha ब्रह्मात्मकच्य बोधेन मोक्ष सिद्ध्यति सो विवेकाचूडामणि श्लोक श्रेष ब्रह्म आत्म ऐक्य बोधेन सो दिस् बै ओनली दि ऐडेटिटी आफ् सेलफ दट ऐ एम एंड द ब्रह्मन दट इज एसेंशियली तत्वी स्टेटमेंट दट वी यूज बाय भागत्याग लक्षण और सामनाधिकरण और भागत्याग सामनाधिकरण and that's the only way that one can gain the absolute knowledge now this we should know what is atma and what is brahman is a scripture really defines these two correctly and even though they are not definable and so what exactly is ishvara so everybody wants to know what is god so everybody has a concept of god and people fight this is my real god and yours is not a god so what exactly is how you define a god most of the religions define god as jagat karta ishwaraha lord is the one who created this universe so he is the creative knowledge only so that means he is an intelligent cause for creating but where is he now says he is not anywhere here because he the whole thing he created he should be outside the creation so we put him in heaven or somewhere else that he cannot be reached but vedant instruent to last who created the heavens where was he before he created therefore what is the nature of that or where exactly before anything is created and how did he create where did he get the material for creation so not only the intelligent cause vedanta prescribe the upadana karanam or the material cause also from him only so in the mundaka upanishad the, the god is defined not only as an intelligent cause as the nimitta karanam also upadana karanam or the material cause for creation and that's why vedanta differs because he himself became many so where is he now everything that i see i transact with is nothing but the lord himself so what's the definition it says i can pray the lord for upasana or for karma yoga. yoga i can invoke him since he is everywhere and therefore he has to be formless because any form is limited and therefore the one which is infinite he has to be formless and the formlessness form one that has no form cannot be doing prayers in terms of a form but although he is formless i can invoke his presence in some form for me to pray just as when i salute a piece of cloth with the stars and stripes i am not really saluting a piece of cloth but i am saluting a nation behind the cloth so my understanding when i am saluting and chanting the national anthem looking at the piece of cloth with stars or stripe or whatever the national cloth is national flag is i am not really respecting a particular piece of cloth but i am respecting the nation same way 
I can invoke the Lord which is imperceptible in any form since he pervades all forms knowing very well it's not the form but I only for upasana for the prayer I am invoking Asmin Bimbe Mahavishnum Avahayami Asmin Bimbe Mahaganapatim Avahayami so I take even a piece of a turmeric paste and invite the Lord to come there knowing very well the piece of the turmeric powder is not the Lord but now that who is everywhere and every form is his form can be evoked any form also that is the knowledge so therefore I can invoke for the sake of for my prayers in any form in the form of Vishnu or Shiva or we have thousands of forms depending upon your mental Ishtadevata or whatever the culture that you have been brought up with. So I can invoke in any form for prayer but don't hang on to the form only as the Lord then that becomes a fanatism only. I have to understand I am only invoking him in this form but he is beyond the forms and he is ever present omnipresent and omniscient we know at the same time we are only say he is only this type and not that type so all fighting in terms of religions is only not understanding clearly what exactly is God how do we define God the beautiful sloka in the Mundaka Upanishad is a one of a kind where it clearly defines what exactly is the God that which cannot be defined yet is defining it and we go through that statement here it says this is a Mundaka, Mundaka Upanishad sloka number six it says yet adrishya magrahya magotra mavarnam adachu sotram tadapani padam nityam vibhu sarvagata susukshmam tadavyayam yad bhuta yonim paripasyanti dhiraha let's chant again yad adrishya magrahya magotra mavarnam adachu sotram tadapani padam nityam vibhu sarvagatam susukshmam tadavyayam yad bhuta yonim paripasyanti dhiraha so this is the nature of God definition one of the beautiful definitions in the whole Upanishads also. This is yet adresyam agrahyam agotram avarnam. So it's defining something which is not this, not this, not this, because you cannot define infinity. Infinity is not finite, is itself is infinity. So I cannot define it at the same time I'm looking for it. So here is a beautiful definition using a negative terms to define that which is negating everything else that I perceive as God so that I can look beyond. And that's exactly here the definition is yet adresyam, that which cannot be seen. So it is not perceptible. So anything I see cannot be God. Obviously the adresyam means, oh I saw Lord Krishna yesterday. That means that's not the God. So anything that is a form cannot be God. But at the same time I invoke the Lord in form and I can even see the Lord in that form by my upasana. But even if the Lord comes, he has to teach me that I am beyond all this also. So even if the Lord comes, he says, Beta, thank you for inviting me. But what is you have to learn, therefore you go to a teacher. Krishna himself says, go to a teacher and ask appropriate questions to learn the, the, the nature of the truth. So that which is adresyam. Adresyam means it is not only through the eyes, but it is imperceptible. For all five sense organs cannot work. So it is an example of looking, you cannot see. But at the same time, you cannot see, you cannot hear, you cannot touch. So all perceptual information that I cannot locate the Lord by that means through perception. Agrahyam. This is pancha. Jnanendriyas cannot be used to know the God. That's essentially, that's how he is defining. Agrahyam. Agrahyam means that I can grasp. Grasp means I use a hand to grasp something. So therefore, this is not which cannot be grasped. The Lord cannot be grasped also. Means it's not an object for karmendriyas. Pancha karmendriyas, pancha jnanendriyas cannot be used for knowing the Brahman. And that which is beyond, therefore anything that can I hold on cannot be Brahman. Agotram. Gotram is that whenever you go to a temple, they'll ask you what Gotram you are. Gotram is we say, I am coming from this Gotram. That means we tell the Rushi name from which I am originated. So we don't know what the Rushi has done. We just say, I am from that Gotram. 
these are rushis are called veda drashtas they are the ones who could visualize in the seat of meditation the the truth that is being revealed as the veda veda means knowledge so when they are meditating knowledge gets revealed because it is the vastu tantram when you are in the meditative state in whatever knowledge it comes to you you don't have you cannot go and gain in knowledge it has to come to you provided your mind is conducive to receive knowledge so when we say vishwamitra is gayatri mantra is about to vishwamitra it's not vishwamitra road gayatri mantra it's only because he is able to contemplate and meditate on devi gayatri and in that meditative state he gayatri revealed herself so our rushis of the yoga or the scientists who are meditating in that particular idea or concept to know what is the truth even the uh, even objective sciences also when i am meditating on a particular area contemplating it the knowledge gets revealed a, an objective scientist may claim i discovered it or i made a breakthrough but what it means is it is again revealed knowledge cannot be will knowledge is doesn't depend upon me knowledge has to be depends upon the knowledge itself and depends on the nature of the mind that is ready to be to to be blessed therefore agotram agotram is i tell gotram because i am coming from that origin and he is doesn't have any origin because he himself is birthless that means there is no cause for him this is cause for everything but himself cannot be if i say there is god came from another people ask who who, who created god if somebody else is created god then we ask another question who created him it becomes infinite regress so we buck has to stop there he says he himself is beginningless how can it be because it is pure existent consciousness is it sat chidananda swarupam satyam gnanam anantam brahma it's pure existence and existence cannot be born because if there's existence has to be born then who will know it number 1 now what was there before existence was born the non existence was there you say non existence was existing that means it is existence there only so it's a contradiction in terms existence can have na udeti na astameti neither it has a beginning nor an end it is beginningless and therefore na gotram agotram so it is eternally present unchanging that ever present in everywhere that means even now it is right here and right now therefore realization is recognition that that consciousness existence right now and right here because right now and right here are beyond the concept of space and time also and that for is called agotram avarnam avarnam varnam is not normally described as by the chaturvedha the four varnas are created by me lord says that is one aspect but shankara defines is varnam is varnyate that which can be described described means it should have attributes if i describe an object i can only describe an object in terms of attributes that means it is of this type that type and so on what is a chair chair has this form and this many and all legs everything i can describe and from the description of its attributes i can define an object so only an object can be defined and therefore only object has attributes only finite things have attributes infinite cannot be described therefore infinite cannot have attributes and therefore it is essentially a varnyam so varnam varnam means description so varna 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 means it cannot be described so essentially the shloka is describing that which cannot be described how it is describing by negating all our prior concepts of what it is at the same time it is not an non existent it is a very existence which i cannot see or we cannot feel at the same time it is there so every object exists because of this only therefore the existence lends support to the existence of any object in the world so i had to see through my viveka by discriminative intellect when i look at every object recognize that the object that i am seeing only attributes but attributes but i cannot grasp the essence through the senses senses can only see attributes and i am describing the object only through the attributes 
but I cannot see the object really because the perceptions or the senses cannot grasp the attribute, the substantive. A substantive is nothing but Brahman only and that which is avarnam, that cannot be described other than it is satyam jnanam anantam as a description which is actually pointing in the direction for me to contemplate on and so that I can know it. So it is agotram avarnam. Then it says achachuhu. It doesn't have eyes. So not only it cannot see, it, I cannot see it, it cannot see also. So Lord is seeing uh, now and we have be careful, Lord is watching you. Lord cannot watch also. Why? He doesn't have eyes. Say there are different descriptions of the Lord. In the Purusha Sukta, if you go to the Purusha Sukta, Sahasra Seersha Purushaha Sahasra Chas Sahasra Pal Sabhumim Ishvato Vutva Atyat Ishtad Dashang Gulam. He says thousands of eyes he has. Sahasra Seersha Purusha, thousands of head. Sahasra Chaha, so thousands of eyes. And here he says Achachuhu, he doesn't have any eyes. So both descriptions are really true. From the point of absolute, pure satyam, jnanam, anantam, there is nothing there, therefore there is no eyes there. But at the same time, when he appears as many, every eyes is nothing but his own eyes. So sahasra means thousands. Thousand means every eye that is in the world is nothing but his own eyes. So I could see. How could I see? I could see because of the presence of the Lord, which makes it three, because the very life principle is activated in me. Therefore, in the Kena Upanishad, that eyes cannot see that which eyes can see or that because of which eyes can see that alone is Brahman so here is the where eyes cannot see but that because of which eyes can see and that is the very life principle because of which I am able to see there here it is, Lord himself cannot see from the point of absolute and Lord alone is see from the point of transactional reality. Both are definitions of the Lord. So achachuhu, this is essentially the eyes, srotram and tadapani padam. So achachuhu srotram, neither he can see nor he can hear and neither he can have hands nor legs. So he is Sahasra Sirsha. He says thousands of eyes on one side, thousands of heads on the other side. At the same time, he doesn't have any head or he doesn't have any eyes also. That means it is beyond description of anything. At the same time, it is the very essence because of which the whole universe is seen. And Nityam, Nityam means that which is eternal, means anything that is changing cannot be eternal. That is which is changeless. So anything that is changing means there has to be a substratum or that which is supports the changes. So A plus B is equal to C plus D. If you say there is an equation, there has to be something that is changeless in the equation. That's what we call a balancing equation. So there is a law of conservation that in spite of changes, there is a changeless entity in that. That is what the mass balance is. That's why conservation of mass and conservation of energy. But we are talking about absolute law of conservation because everything comes from him and itself is many. At the same time, he himself doesn't undergo any change. And that is Nityam. So gold becoming a ring, becoming a bangle and bangle becoming a necklace. But gold remains as gold. That is from the temporal example, says gold is more permanent compared to the rings and the bangles which are names and forms. Same way, names and forms, the whole world is changing and when there is something is changing, there has to be changeless entity which is a very substratum or very support for the whole universe. And that is essentially is Lord himself. That is Nityam. Vibhuhu. Vibhuhu means that which is the glory. Glory is one definition and it says Vividha Bhavanti, that which is became many, many varieties. It says in the 10th chapter of Gita, it says Vibhuti Yoga. So he says, oh, oh Arjuna, see this is my glory. So he gives every example which are beautifying the whole nature itself that Arjuna was familiar. And in the end, Krishna says, infinite are my nature and it's impossible to define my nature itself. Look at my glory itself. That itself means my glory. And that is called Viduhu. 
and the rest of sloka is is sarvagatim susutshvam tadavyayam yadbhuta yonim paripasyanti dhiraha that which is sarvagatam that which is essentially all pervading infinite susutshvam it is very subtle and tadavyayam which doesn't any undergo any deterioration or degeneration and yet bhuta yonihi and that is the source for all beings that means it is a cause for the creation itself and that is the karanam for all the karyam and paripasyanti dhiraha that dhiraha those wise people can see this seeing means it's not through the part through the eyes they understand it i hope you see what i am talking about essentially understand what the what the, the what that which is being you know, undescribable but being described as the essence of the god itself we'll go into more details and how atma is defined how you see the beautiful parallelism between the two and that is recognition uh, that brahmatmai atmai ke bodera moksha siddhati by understanding that two are not it's really different because if you see description of atma in the in the te- seventh mantra of the of the mandukya karika you will see exactly identical definition at this we will stop here om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vasishyate ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम